All right, so we're back at the 100 yard line, taking a break from filming our tripod masterclass. And this video has kind of been on my mind for a while. Um, it, it's been a long time since this uh, transaction occurred. And really what it was was a debate on whether or not law enforcement snipers should be trained on how to use a rear shooting support as a bag. Uh, my train of thought is absolutely, why wouldn't you? Um, and the other thought process is, is, well, you might not have it with you or actually you most likely won't have it with you and you won't have time and it's more stuff to carry and blah, blah, blah. So anyone who is in the competitive circuit understands the benefit of a rear bag. And the rear bag is not just something that we use to support or fill the negative space between the buttstock and the ground. It can be used for all manner of things. Basically, it's there to support the rifle and give us some soft contact between the rifle and another hard spot that it would be resting on for a support. Uh, it gives us way more stability. It gives us better recoil management. And guess what? These are all techniques that we've figured out through competing and identifying what really is capable of a precision rifle in the hands of somebody who really knows how to use it. So that's where all these techniques come from. We actually go out, we push ourselves, we put ourselves into these situations in different environments, solve other people's problems, so that way we can take these techniques back and use them where we need them. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate uh, the no bag drill first. Um, basically it's a, it's, a bag, it's a drill that we utilize to teach our students um, the importance of breathing control and it's kind of rear bag appreciation. Now, the thought process was that I put out a video on YouTube and the, the, the individual used that video and said, look, this guy's a hypocrite um, because he's shooting these super tiny groups with no rear bag at a hundred yards. And so see, yeah, you don't really need it. It's like, well, okay, that's fair. That's super fair, I get it. Um, but just because you can doesn't mean that you should. And I'm gonna demonstrate with another drill after I shoot this one to illustrate that. So hang with me. I'm gonna go through the no bag drill. You guys will probably get something out of it for educational purposes. And we'll roll into the natural point of aim drill to really solidify this concept and bring it home. So give me a second while I get set up. All right, here we go. No bag drill is here to illustrate the importance of understanding how breath influences our sight picture and how getting a natural point of aim at the bottom of the breathing cycle to allow that reticle to just float in the middle of where you want the bullet to go, that gives you all the time in the world to press the trigger. Well, sort of all the time in the world, as long as you know, you're not holding your breath. So I'm gonna take a couple of shots and demonstrate the process to you guys. No rear bag, it's right there. So just me connected to the rifle. I'm not shoving myself into the gun. I'm actually using rearward pressure to pull the rifle into my body because I'm not always gonna be able to load the bipods wherever I go. Another thing that we learned from competition, imagine that. All right. All right, looks pretty good. Here we go. Breathe in, breathe out. Not perfect, let's see what happens next. There we go. Let's take a few. Okay, not the best, but it's still well within a minute of angle and I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. So now we're gonna transition over to the natural point of aim drill. You get your rear bag for this one, but the natural point of aim drill is here to show you the importance of a natural point of aim. And you're actually gonna press the trigger with your eyes closed. 
and you're going to be surprised at where the bullet goes. So let's do it. All right, so we get our rear bag. We're going to get ourselves into a position. We use the rear bag to fill in that negative space. So I'm going to close my bolt, place my finger on the trigger. When I close my eyes, breathe in, breathe out, I should be able to open my eyes back up and see the reticle smack dab in the middle of the target. And that's what we're going to work on. Make a little adjustment here. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's see what happens. We'll close our eyes. Okay. Two shots touching. Three shots touching. Let's go for five. Well, that one kind of wandered off, not a big deal. Okay, I got one straggler out of the group. Normally when we shoot this drill, um, we're not really super concerned about bullets going exactly where the reticle is, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, what we're looking for is the shooter to have consistency in their groups, uh, in the wear that the bullets are printing in the group. Meaning if I have a shotgun pattern all over the target, it's pretty evident to me as a teacher that the student doesn't understand what a natural point of aim is. And now that forces us as teachers to go back and inspect that student's position to a greater degree and help them out. So, but if I have a student that's shooting good, solid, tight groups and they're just a little bit low and to the right or high and left or whatever it might be, that's not a big deal because three thousandths of an inch of movement here at the buttstock equals a half of an inch of movement at the target. So I'm printing a group that's probably about three quarters of an inch low and to the right of my intended point of aim. So that means I was able to keep this uh, buttstock to within nine thousandths of an inch, um, actually even less than that, about six thousandths of an inch, um, which is pretty much two diameters of an average human hair. So I think I'm doing all right. The point behind all of this is just because you can do something doesn't mean that you should. Clearly, I can shoot a decent group with no rear bag. I can just demonstrate as well that I can clearly shoot a group with my eyes closed, but I'm certain that I wouldn't want to shoot a group with my eyes closed on a crisis site with an actual live target and then be able to say, oh, well, you know what, I can, so I decided that I should. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. The rear bag is an enabler. It's there to help you build the most solid position possible because that is your responsibility as someone who's responding to a crisis and making a very critical shot. You should be using every last available piece of gear at your disposal to build the most solid, sustainable shooting position possible. That's your job. So if you guys got any questions, any comments, leave them below, happy to answer them. And um, circulate this video. I want people to know about it. It's really important. So this is called the evolution of technique. This is not resting on our laurels and saying, oh, we've done the same thing for 30 years. Why should we change it? Well, you should change it because it's called evolution. The only thing that is constant in our world these days, well, in all days, is change. That's it. And if you're not changing with the world, you're stagnant. And if you're stagnant, you have no business teaching anybody anything in this profession. So. 
You guys know the drill, man. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep your face on the gun.